for anyone who's actually watched Wing Chun, it's an extremely efficient martial art. Maybe not considered the most flamboyant of martial arts. So how did you get around that and right. make it look visually appealing? Right. So basically, we have to understand, you know, we need to sacrifice some kind of, you know, uh, similarity in Wing Chun, right? We have to make it a bit more complex, you know? If not, you know, one punch come, one time punch, you know, that's finished, you know, then, you know, we can't make a movie. A movie will be, you know, 10 minutes finished. Yeah. So we have to make the movement a bit longer, you know, make the fight a bit longer, make, you know, the movement a bit bigger, right? And sometimes we use some wire, of course, you know, and every movie they use, but we don't use it excessively, right? We, we just use some, you know, to just create, you know, the feel, you know, of the power, maybe, you know, to, to create a feel, the movie feeling, right? So, um, and this is something you know we keep in mind, right? So we, we use if you like some other martial art to put it into our fighting film, you know, where our movie is not just purely Wing Chun. So you will see some you know movement is not quite look like Wing Chun, but you know I will say about seventy percent is quite original Wing Chun. So in this way we can overcome the problem. Okay. Do you feel that the, the Wing Chun that we see in the film actually represents the art? Yes. Um like I said, you know, I said I think about 70% is a pure Wing Chun, right? We still put about 30% not really Wing Chun move in it. But for um, introduce Wing Chun as a martial art to the audience or to people that haven't seen Wing Chun before, I think it's good enough, you know, because at the end of the day, we are not producing a documentary video or teaching video, we are producing a movie. So our uh, audience is, you know, general public, if you like, the people that haven't done my martial art before or they have done little martial arts you know so i think you know it's good enough you know for for on this purpose okay now talking about other martial uh, other martial arts film hong kong martial arts films and the use of wire foo what, what are your thoughts on wire foo compared to the fight scene we'd see in it man right right um <clears throat> basically you know some uh martial arts film they use excessively, you know, like using the wire to create, you know, um, the movement. So this is another extreme, I would say, I wouldn't say they are not good, you know, they will give, you know, um, some kind of, you know, like, um, impossible, become possible feeling, you know, to the audience. This is still good, you know, in, in the art aspect, you know, in the movie aspect, you know, but, you know, um, you might be want to have something a little bit more down to earth, right so we try to uh, use less wire even we have to use it we have to have a really good reason to use it we don't use it excessively right so you know and um, i think you know in deep mind we get a really good balance you know uh, we don't overuse it but we use it at the right time at the right you know place if you like right so you know um i think yeah i, I think yeah i think it's not bad you know the whole movie when i'm looking back thinking back to when you were actually shooting the movie and think and looking at how successful the film has been now. Are you surprised at how successful it has been? Yes, I, I'm. I'm quite surprised because you know, um, if you look back, you know, there wasn't a good kung fu movie or really famous or groundbreaking kung fu movie for really you know ten years, right? So we actually we take a quite big risk, you know, to make something you know a uh, martial art, you know, <coughs> um, martial art film if you like, you know, yeah, basically you know you think about. Um, not many people will interested, but you know, we, when when we make it, we think we only think we've only got you know, um, really limited audience interested, but especially you know, maybe just Wing Chun people, right? But um, we have done the research before we make the movie, even just the Wing Chun people, where right? we got quite a lot, you know, in you know, in the whole world, if you like, we got you know more than one million people, you know, to do Wing Chun. So, you know, we think about worse come to worse, even just these one million people watching the movie, we're still not losing out too much. So, but at the end, you know, it's come out, you know, so good, you know, we, 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 are, we are surprised, you know, but, but I mean, um, and what, you know, this even movie able to tell us is if we really put the heart into the movie, we put the resource at the right, you know, um, at the right place, if you like, right? And the people, they will appreciate it, you know, and then we will have, you know, the good feedback or results at the end. So this is something really encouraging. Mm. Now, also, thinking back on your experience of making the film, are there any particularly memorable, memorable moments that you can share with us? Right, um, the really shareable moment I would say is um, 
I make a good friend, you know, I become a good friend with Sam Hong, right? Uh, I went back to Hong Kong last year, we went out have a dinner together, right? And um, and he is a, such a nice guy, you know, I would say, you know, before, you know, I went to Hong Kong, I thought, you know, Sam Mo, he's a big superstar, movie star, big, big brother, everyone call him big brother, right, in the movie industry. I was a little bit worried about how to work with him, you know, so what I can do, you know, like, you know, so, but actually he is a really down to earth person, right? He he don't look down to, to me, you know, to talk to me, he just see me as the same level and he take my advice, right? And uh, I really truly feel, you know, we just want to make a good movie, you know, it's not something, you know, like we want to get the credit or whatever, you know, so everyone is contribute as much as they can, you know, to the movie in order to make a really good product. Right, so and and another and another thing is uh, Samuel. He's a really good guy. You know, he look after every staff. You know, in the filming crew, and he he bang, you know us lunch or dinner. You know, we go out have something to eat after a hard day work. You know, so you know and uh, I remember when I work uh, on the Yip Man. You know, uh, we had a Chinese New Year. I, I spent a Chinese New Year uh, in Shanghai. And he in uh, Samuel, he got his own apartment in Shanghai, and he invited me to have a dinner with his family, you know, in Chinese New Year. So I think this is quite good, you know. I just know him about three weeks ago, you know, but he see me as part of his family. Another time, man, we go together as well. We had a, you know, fantastic time. So I think this is something, you know, um, I really appreciate, you know, have a friendship, and you know, also it's a really good experience for me. Okay, it's interesting you mentioned family there. Um, Wing Chun has profound roots in family and tradition. Now, in the modern world, looking at your Wing Chun and how you teach Wing Chun, how do you feel about the, the idea that Wing Chun should be taught traditionally and shouldn't change, or do you feel it should adapt, and how should it adapt? It's going right. To um, what, if you ask me, you know, uh, how Wing Chun can develop, I would say, you know, um, for a Wing Chun practitioner, first of all, you have to understand the art really well first in order to develop it, you know. I think at the moment, um, quite a lot of people, they only have really short time to train Wing Chun and they think about developing it, you know. I think this is, is really not correct in my point of view, right. I would say, you know, uh, from, my, from, my, from my point of view is you have to practice Wing Chun for quite a while and get a really good understanding and try to understand in different aspects. For example, different teachers, they got a um, different um, point of view of Wing Chun, if you like, or something they're good at in Wing Chun, right? So hopefully you can see more Wing Chun with diff from different teacher, right? Or different Wing Chun practitioner. You understand in a different angle. You get to fully understand about the art first. And then in terms of develop it, you know, of course, you know, uh, martial arts have to develop, can't just stay at the same place all the time, you know. Uh, after you have fully understand the art, you can have a look, you know, other martial arts, this is what, what I do. I train other martial arts, teach other martial arts, and then see, you know, um, first of all, you know, how we can use Wing Chun more effectively, you know, against other martial arts. If you have no idea about how other, other, other martial arts work, how you can use your Wing Chun, you know, um, effectively is a little bit ambitious for myself, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, this is why, you know, for a Wing Chun practitioner, if you want to develop the Wing Chun, you have to do a few other martial arts, and then you can use the knowledge to feed back to your Wing Chun, and then you can think about how to use it properly or how to develop it. So, you know, this is um, my idea is, you know, I'm not just teaching Wing Chun, I also teach other style to my uh, student and make them, you know, can understand Wing Chun in other aspect. Okay, thank you for that. Um, one last question then. Um, Wong Kar Wai's long awaited film, The Grand Masters, is due out soon. Um, do you feel there's scope for more films about it, man? Right, um, I think, you know, Wong Kar Wai, he's another. Um, area or another branch of Yip Man if you like, right? Because, you know, um, I, have, I haven't seen the film yet, of course, no one has been you know, still making it, but um, from his previous film, I don't think, you know, the Mahashok will be his first priority. Maybe, you know, he's towards, you know, a more art side, you know, of the movie. So it's good, you know, to give other angle of Yip Man movie, right? But um, in, my, in my mind, you know, or um, at the moment, you know, what I think, you know, the way to go for is we're making another final chapter of Yip Man because, you know, um, we have uh, Yip Man 1, Yip Man 2, you know, about uh, 
even after he um, went to Hong Kong, you know, uh, escaped from China to Hong Kong, and then he teach Wing Chun, you know, I think it will be have a, it will be good, you know, to have another chapter. It's about you know, um, when Yip Man getting old, you know, he tried, he got a few good student, you know, and how other still how the and the few of it. A few of his students, how to develop or spread Wing Chun to the rest of the world. For example, Bruce Lee. For example, Wong Chun Long. You know, a few famous you know students. You know, the Wing Chun practitioner. They will know. You know, and a story about them and their relationship with Yip Man, and also how they can put the Wing Chun forward. You know, to to spread it to the world, rest of the world. I think this is uh, the way to go forward. If you ask me. Absolutely wonderful. Well, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you, okay. Master Leo Yeo. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm.